Hey Bears, I am the Gaming Grizzly and welcome to my top 20 tips and tricks for Durango Wildlands. Big thank you to Nexon for sponsoring this video. I really hope my tips and tricks help you playing the game. It took me a long time to create this video, so I would really appreciate it if you could support my channel by leaving a fat like. Share this video with all of your friends and leave me a comment in the comment section below about your tips for the game. And if you are new here, make sure to subscribe to The Gaming Grizzly for more Durango videos. But let's jump right into it! Tip number 1. Lost Packages While you are exploring the different islands in Durango Wildlands, make sure to keep an eye open for lost packages. They can contain various items that can be really useful and even outfits that you cannot find anywhere else in the game. Tip number 2. Landmarks On each island you can find landmarks like craters and warp holes. Craters will help you find specific resources that you might need quicker and warp holes help you to navigate faster on the islands. Thanks to the detect warp hole function, landmarks are easy to find and on top of that you will receive experience points for each landmark that you find. Once you have found all landmarks on an island, you can also claim an exploration reward on the map. Tip number 3. Find a team. Sometimes you will find yourself stuck because you want to bring down some big dinosaurs that are too powerful for you. Make sure to ask people for help. The community in Durango is really friendly and together you can achieve way more than you could on your own. Tip number 4. Level up skills. In Durango you will find that you have a lot of different skills and it's essential to level them up as well. Let's take a look at the weapon tool skill. That is one of the most crucial skills since this skill allows you to craft better weapons and tools. If you want to level up your skill quickly, you want to find an activity that gives experience points to that skill. I, for example, checked out the stonework plate. And here at the skill category, we can see that crafting this item will increase our weapon and tool skill. So I gathered a lot of pebbles and crafted a lot of stonework plates. Down here, you can see that it helps you to level up the skill and eventually you will reach the next level. Tip number 5. The Island Market You can sell items that you don't need at the island market. You can also craft expensive items to sell them for good cash there. Here you can see two examples. I used to craft ropes to level up my processing skill. But I didn't need them. I sold them for a reasonable price and even if it's not that much, it will add up. And I also specifically crafted large boxes to sell them for a good price on the market. Tip number 6. Modify your weapons. As soon as you have reached level 25 with your weapon and tool skill, you are able to learn the nail spikes modification. I highly recommend you to learn this skill since you only need a bunch of nails and ropes to improve your overall damage with any weapon. Tip number 7. Choose your favorite weapon. Select a weapon type that you prefer and build up your skills in a smart way. I personally love to play with the crossbow and land my hits from a safe distance. Therefore, I leveled up everything that would help me increase the damage and accuracy with crossbows. You don't have unlimited skill points, so use them wisely. Since I will not use a melee weapon anytime soon, I stopped using my skill points on the melee weapon skill tree and even started to unlearn the melee skills that I don't need. Tip number 8. Use your environment. Sometimes you can use your environment to your advantage. You can use rocks and boulders to hide from dinosaurs and avoid their attacks. In some cases, as you can see, it even helps you bring down dinosaurs that you usually couldn't bring down that easily. In my case, I was trying to tame the dinosaur. It didn't work, but without that trick I barely even get the chance to tame it in the first place. Tip number 9. Easy item selection. If you want to select a lot of items in your bag, or even the same item several times, there is a way to make this easier. You can either slide over the items you want to select without tapping every single item, 
or you can tap and hold a specific item and all other items in your bag that are the same kind of item will be selected. Tip number 10. Tame an animal. At survival skill level 15, you are able to tame your first animal. And the higher you level up, the more animals you can tame and keep on your side. I recommend you to catch at least two different kinds of animals. One that helps you fight other animals and one that can carry a lot of items. Tip number 11. Fighting animal. The fighting animal that you catch will help you in your battles against other animals. And this can give you a huge advantage since it is dealing extra damage. But you need to keep in mind that you need to feed your animal. When it has less than 50% of its energy, it will not assist you in your fights. Tip number 12. Pack animal. You can switch out your animals at any given point in the game, which makes it easy to switch to your pack animal and use its bag to store items that you don't use that frequently. I usually store a lot of food there just in case I need it. Tip number 13. Food. Always bring enough food. You need energy for almost every move you make. If it's gathering materials, fighting animals or crafting weapons and goods. Especially when you're in a battle, you want to be energized to use your abilities. A little trick is that you can actually eat while you harvest or build. To save you some time, I recommend you to eat as soon as you can while you are gathering materials. Tip number 14. Increased bag. As soon as you can, build yourself an additional bag that lets you store more items. You usually have 100 item slots on your character, but a bag can increase the limit. For example here, you can see that I wear a pouch that gives me an additional 90 item slots. That's really helpful. Tip number 15. Daily missions. This might sound a little bit silly, but finish your daily tasks. They really grant good rewards. You can accept the missions at the communication center and most of the time those missions are relatively easy. Like dropping off a bunch of leaves. This will give you a few rewards like T-stones, experience points and trust for the groups. As soon as the mission is completed, you can jump into the menu and open up your task tab. Here you will get even more rewards. Tip number 16. Group influence. With the missions at the communication center, you will also increase your trust with different groups. The higher the trust level, the better, because if you click on tasks, you can go to the support organizations and request various items from the different groups. Tip number 17. Events. You can find events by clicking on tasks and events. Make sure to take part in the events, because they also grant great items. First. You will find the daily supply, which basically rewards you for just locking in on the day. But sometimes you will find some special events as well. Right now for example, we have a special supply event that rewards you with great items like bags, outfits, tea stones, weapons, boxes and much much more. Tip number 18. Join a clan. Joining a clan has different benefits. First of all, you will find friendly people that can help you out with items or help you fighting enemies and completing quests. But a clan also offers various effects depending on the clan's level. Some of those effects are really helpful in the long run. For example, gaining 5% more experience points or reducing the warp and sale costs by 10%. Tip number 19. Toggle names. When you tap on the magnifying glass in the bottom right, you'll be able to toggle names from visible to invisible. In my opinion, it's always good to have the names visible because you can get a better overview of what you can find in your range. I only toggle it to invisible if there is either too much going on at the map or if I just want to enjoy the beauty of the game. Tip number 20. Different characters. You want to start all over again because you want to start at level 1? A friend just started the game and you don't want to be that guy that is already level 60? Or because you just want to see the T-Rex in the tutorial again? Well, you don't have to delete the game. You don't even need to create a new account. Just click on the character tab in the menu and select change character. 
This will allow you to create a new character so you can start like a newborn baby. Alright, alright, alright. Those were my top 20 tips and tricks for Durango Wildlands. If they helped you out or if you learned something new, please support me by leaving a fat like, a comment in the comment section below and if you are new on my channel, make sure to subscribe to The Gaming Grizzly for more Durango videos. I hope you all have a great day and see you all in the next video. Bye bye!